it sounds like you you could have probably picked any church to go to if you're moving to a new town. You know, how do you settle on that one? Yeah, so we moved to San Antonio a year ago. The about seven years part of that, we were planning a church in, in Alpine, <laughs> and so we were planning. Uh, we, we were planning a church in Alpine, and as uh, I was studying more and more church history, uh, liturgy kind of kept coming up, and the more I was studying, the more and more I was studying like Reformed theology, the liturgy continued to come up, and I think you and I had were having conversations uh, because we were kind of becoming more and more uncomfortable with a lot of the, the, the culture that we were in. Right. And so you and I kind of were in the, the more or less the reformed SBC culture. Right. Yeah. And we were kind of like, just not really pleased with a lot of like the way that was going. And then like, I was yeah. just continuously like feeling more and more like tribalists, like in the, the right. city I was in, uh, we were, our church was just different. Uh, the theology we had was different. Um, it was just, it was, it was like being on a deserted island. And so the, my broader tribe, like the reformed SBC thing, people, I was just not feeling like I was in line with a lot of them. So there was just like a, a lot of that going on. And so when you and I were talking, like this was probably like going back, probably like 2018, maybe. Hmm. Um, we liturgy was coming up in a lot of our conversations and about why churches did were liturgical and why are why aren't a lot of churches liturgical anymore? Um well even though like this even though we said every church has a liturgy but for the sake of conversation, like why are churches not liturgical <laughs> anymore? Why is the order of service not what it once was? Why does it seem like it's so there's not very much thought put into it? Uh, why does the church service feel like it's, how can we get people in and out as fast as possible? Um, why does it yeah. seem to cater more to, to our feelings so much more, like so much? Um, like, should there be, should there be more to this? And so I think in learning about liturgy, um, I think one of the things that was, a, that was a big factor for me was learning that there actually was thought put into it. Like yeah. that awareness that there actually was a lot of thought put into this. Thousands of years of thought. Yeah. And so like just thousands of years of thought and study uh, put into these liturgies. And so I think one of the things that the, one of the ways the church has failed over the past however many decades was we don't, we don't teach the young, young, young people in the church really anything anymore. Uh, the church doesn't really care about discipling. And I know I'll speak in generally. So I'm speaking generally, so like that's just what it is. Actually, um, yeah, actually, like my church does disciple people and pour into young people. Like, and praise the Lord for that. We're not talking to you. Yeah, man. <laughs> and the, Random the person broader, in the comments, right? The the broader culture, like we don't really do that. And so, like you, basically, you when you're a young like me, somebody 18 coming into the faith, like my one of the questions I had was like, why is everything so old? Why do we do these things this way? Like, why do y'all, why do, why is everything just so like old and historic? And when I'm asking these questions, nobody has any answers or nobody's taking the time to answer these things. And so like 10 yeah. years down the road, I'm learning that there, like you said, there's thousands of years of study and thoughts and prayer and fasting going over these liturgies. And the whole point of the liturgies was one of the, one of the points of, of, of the liturgies was to disciple the, the members of the church. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was probably the, the big change for me in that was these, the liturgies were a way that the church discipled its people. And it's so like, it's not a bad thing that liturgy is repetitive. Um, it's yeah. not a bad thing at all. It's actually a very good thing. And like, when you think about every other area and aspect of your life, you have an understanding of that. If you're an athlete, you perfect your craft through repetition. Like you become, if you're a basketball player, you become good at dribbling by doing the drills and the practices like over and over and yeah. over and over again. If you're a football player, you're a wide receiver, you become good at route running by running routes over and over and over again. If you're a musician on the piano, like you practice that over and over again in repetition. If you're a, you become good at typing by actually by these exercises, 
And so like, we kind of like, we understand this with everything else in life, but for some reason, somewhere along the lines, our faith are, is, has been, are, is different. And that has to be the exception. And like, would that, that was, that was probably like, that was honestly probably the biggest game changer for me. And, and so I was slowly trying to figure out like, how can we be more intentional with art of liturgy and, and our church plants before we moved to, to San Antonio? Um, I don't know if it was going to be a historic one. Might have like, I might have like Frankenstein it because that's how I am. Um, yeah. But so like when we stumbled onto a church in San Antonio, that was, that was liturgical, not high church, uh, no robes and any of that kind of, no robes, chanting, smoke and that kind of stuff, but it's liturgical. That was pretty awesome. 